Are you experiencing the gospel in your life, the good news? In other words, do the word, does the word gospel or good news, the English version, good news, does it characterize your life? Is your life full of good news? See, the gospel is not just a message. The gospel is not just uh, the first four books in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The gospel is supposed to characterize your life. Uh, Paul told the different churches that he founded, he says, you are living epistles. He said, you are living epistles. That means you are the living gospel. You are, you are, your life should be the gospel, the message to the different people that you will come across. In other words, when Jesus, in Matthew chapter 10, for example, said to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom, he's not saying that you, he, he did not only mean that you and I were supposed to preach the gospel by opening our mouths and saying the gospel is about Jesus Christ, died on the cross for your sins, and so on and so forth. What he primarily meant was that our lives reflect the fact that Jesus died on the cross, saved us from sin, saved us from the curse of sin, so that now we are living in the blessing that comes in Christ. So that your life now is filled with life. Your, rather, your existence is filled with life. Your existence, you are a walking blessing. That's, that's really what this question means. So, in other words, it's not enough that you open the Bible and read. Are you now the living epistle? When people interact with you, do they, do they read? Do they hear good news from you? Some people are so used to talking about their problems that they end up really, in, in Spanish we say they're so pesado. You know, mabigat ang dating. You don't even want to talk to them. It will ruin your day to talk to them because all they talk about is their problems from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. They're always complaining. Maybe they're not talking about their problems, but they're always complaining. They complain about the rise of gasoline prices, the rise of rice prices, food shortage, you know, and all that stuff. And they're always complaining about something. You know, I was just looking. I wanted to get a picture of it. In fact, I did. I couldn't remember which I used to take a picture with. You know, I, I think it's one of my cell phones or something, but I took a picture of uh, yesterday's uh, paper, you know, t t talking about shortage. And then a few days ago, uh, in one of the major dailies, it also talked about world food shortage. And you know what? It may be true, but you have to understand something. In the kingdom of God, there is no shortage. Because the Bible says, my God, will supply how much? All. all of your needs. In other words, you will never experience shortage. If God has to make your one kilo of rice multiply so that you will never run out, He will do it. Now, other people may experience and feel the shortage, but not the kingdom people. See, the word shortage does not even exist in the kingdom Bible. Sorry, in the Kingdom Dictionary. It should not even be in your mind. It should not even come out of your mouth. Because it doesn't exist. There's a, my God is an abundant God. He's not, uh, He came that you might have life and life in shortage. He said, no, life in what? Abundance. It's not just, it's not just talking about being saved. It's talking about everything about you is in abundance. So he doesn't even want to hear from us shortage. It does not exist. But if you believe in what you read in the papers, then you will experience shortage. <coughs> See, that's what it means. Are you filled with the gospel? Are you filled with good news? People say, ay, grabe talaga, ang shortage ngayon. Now we even have to import rice. They put up the quota and all that stuff like that. And, you know, it's like, what? What are you talking about? Because in the kingdom where I live, there's no such thing. There were, the Bible says when you are a worshiper, in the book of Exodus, I think, when you are a worshiper, you will always have food in your house. 
Now food, of course, is not the most important thing, but without food, you will die. So food is still important. It's not just the most important thing, because life is not about, just about what you eat or what you drink or what you wear. Matthew, Matthew 6 says that. But it is important to eat. So we have to develop a kingdom mindset so that everywhere you go, it doesn't matter what the newspaper says. I, read, I have another news. It's called good news. It's called a Bible. And I know how it ends. And it ends with your victory. It ends where you are the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. People will see you and say, you are blessed. Amen. That's what good news is all about. That's what, that's what the kingdom life is. It's not just about saying, Lord, come into my heart, be my savior. Now I'm saved, praise God. But I live like I'm not saved. See? We, we, we wake up every morning looking like we're baptized in Kalamansi. <laughs> I mean, our faces are more sour than many other people you and I might know. No, in the kingdom, there is only good news. You know what? There is no bad news in heaven. Amen. Bad news, if you bring bad news in heaven, this is the nice part. If you bring bad news in heaven, it becomes good news. You're sick, bring it up to the Lord. What happens? You get healed. Bad news cannot exist in heaven. God, God is in the business of turning the bad into good. So if you hear bad news, rejoice. Rejoice. You know why? Because it cannot touch you. It cannot touch you. Everyone say this. Bad news cannot touch me. Now you have to believe that. You have to understand. Jesus came to preach the gospel. He came to preach good news. He didn't say, you know what, I came here to save you, but that's about it. You know, you're, you're gonna go hungry, you're gonna have to fast, you're gonna die, you're gonna get sick, and you're gonna get a bahu and bad breath, and you know, my gosh, what kind of good news is that? You're gonna go hungry, you know, and you're gonna get heartbroken, your boyfriend's gonna dump you for another girl, or worse, your boyfriend will dump you for another man. You know? <laughs> Where's the good news there? There's no good news there. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He came, He anointed me to preach what? Good news. And when that ends in Luke 4 18, it says, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. God came to proclaim favor. Jesus came to proclaim favor. The favor of God. Let me say, church, listen. The favor of God is upon you. It is. Amen. It is upon you. And that's good news. Right? It's good news. Now, the, see, you have to understand something. God, okay. no, last night I thought I had bad news. This morning I thought I had bad news. When I woke up, I set my alarm at 7 o'clock, and I woke up at 8.30. I said, oh my gosh, I might be late. So I quickly got my notes. You know, I put on the printer, put paper there, pressed print, took a quick shower. When I came out, Nothing was printed. The paper came out, but no ink. <laughs> oh my gosh, how am I going to preach without my notes? You're not so Anyway, God is good because he gave me a pen, so I got my notes. It's in long hand, but it's okay. I can somehow read this. You know? But you have to understand something. Let me give you a verse first. Okay, let's start with a verse. The Bible says in John, Genesis 1, 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over all the earth. Now, you've read this so many times. I've, I've talked about this verse so many times. The purpose of God for you is always to walk in dominion. That's what He wants for you. Dominion. In other words, you're in control. You're on top. You're the one that creates your circumstances. So you, you are the one, you have to say with your mouth, I don't have shortage. I always have food in my house. 